Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to work on the Anne ring and this is going to complete our little set, although I may, um, I don't know, I may do some more things with this. I'm thinking of a different bracelet um, and you know that might happen as well. So uh, here are the earrings, the bracelet, here's the necklace. So for those of you who just want a little ring or just, you know, you just want to get your feet wet and just do a little something something, here's your little ring. So very cute, love it as a pinky ring. Um, very, this is very easy to make. Um, no, you know, you need one chaton. So, you know, easy, <laughs> have one in your stash. A few bugle beads, a few pearls, a couple of, you know, a few bicones, that's it. All right, so I'm gonna clear this off, get a materials list going, and we'll get started. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please ring the bell so you get notified when I upload a video. Thank you so much. See you in a minute. Okay, let's get a materials list going. So you need some four millimeter pearls, some four millimeter bicones, some true two, two millimeter fire polish beads, some three millimeter bicones. I have a little chaton here. This is actually, I think it's called Provence Lavender. It's a Swarovski, but the Potomac Crystals um, chatons work as well, and that's this one. So either one will do. 11 o seed bead, 15 o seed bead. Got some bugle beads, size 11 and 12 beading needle, Eight pound fire line black satin. Um, don't forget to look at this little no more oops bead traits. The baby this is so cute. Um, so I'll have a link down below in the description box um, for this tray. And also I have um, my big mat that I've used for years, 22 by 14. Uh, that's Ringberry store. I'll link that down below. 10% off bronze 2010. You get off your first, you know, off your mat. Um, anything else? Don't forget to click the down hour. Show more. Everything will open up. All the colors, colors that I use today, um, links to bead websites, things I forget, things I want to say, little extras and such. You never know what's going to be down there. So don't forget to do that. All right, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, let's get started. So thread your needle with about 30 inches of thread, put on a stop bead, and leave enough of a tail to sew in. So you're going to pick up and drop down to your stop bead two pearls and two bicones. That's what I have here. I'm going to sew that into a circle. Just sewing through all the beads again. You know, we're going to sew it like that, and then we're going to reinforce by sewing through all the beads again. Maybe pull in. So you want to pass the stop bead here. like that. And you want to hold it. I'm going to go through one more bead right here, this pearl. So you want to hold it so you have a bicone on the top, pearl on the bottom, pearl on the side, bicone on the side. So now you're going to pick up an 11 0 two pearls, and a bicone. This is how I'm situated, exiting this pearl. I'm just going to sew through this bicone. I'm going to pull in this direction. I'm going to skip that 11 0. Here, I'll pop in a little bit more. I'm going to skip that 11 0 and I'm going to sew through the next pearl. And that's going to kind of pull that thread sort of behind that 11 0 so I have a unit that looks like this. Now I'm just going to take my needle and thread, sew through this pearl and this bicone. So now my thread is coming out right here. So get that done and then come back and we'll continue. Okay. So now what we're going to do is pick up a bicone and two pearls. Like that. Exiting here. Just going to sew around the other side of the bead I'm exiting. I'm going to put a unit on. Just gonna give a little pull inward, so I like that. Now I'm gonna pick up a two millimeter fire polish bead and I'm exiting this bicone right here. See? I'm just gonna sew straight up through this one to place that two millimeter right in the middle. See? I'm gonna pick up two pearls. Exiting here. 
just move my thread out of the way. Sitting right there. I'm going to sew through this bicone this way. I'm going to skip that two millimeter and I'm just going to angle my needle so I go through that bicone above the two millimeter. Let me just get my thread back in position. There we go. So here I'm just angling through this one, skipping the two millimeter, sewing through the top one. And this is what I have. I keep dropping my my piece, but you got it. So this is what it looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna let you get to that point and then we'll continue around. So we're exiting this bicone. We're just gonna sew through, make a right, make a right, <laughs> and go through that furl. Give it a little pull. I'm gonna pick up an 11 0 I'm gonna sew through the next pearl. I'm going to pick up another 11 0. I'm going to sew through the next pearl. Again, I'm going to do that all the way around, just 11 0's. 11 0. 11 0. Eleven oh. Now I'm going to go through the pearl, the 11 0 that's already there, and the next pearl, but we have a couple more 11 0's to put on. One here, and one more right there. So we're going to go through the the pearl, the next 11 0, the next pearl, and the next 11 0. So now I have this unit just like that with all the 11 0s around it. I'm exiting one of these the 11 0 between these two pearls. Not a corner, but the one in between two pearls. All right, so get that done and come on back and we'll continue. Okay, we're back. Let's keep going. Pick up four 11 0s. And I would say here to try to get the most even ones. Like sometimes you get an 11 0, like I don't see one now, that's big and square, and then you get some that are nice and round. I'm trying to be consistent in what I pick up because it makes a difference. So I'm exiting this 11 I'm just going to hop up to the hop over to the next one that's in between the two pearls on the side there. You just want to make sure that this pops over like that. Pick up four 11 O's. Do the same thing. Exiting here. I'm going to sew through the next one on the side and give it a pull. Pick up four. Like here, I think I saw a big square one here. Or like an odd shaped one. You just want to make sure that they're as even as possible. Sitting here. So through this one. One more time. So through the original one you were coming out of. Make sure it pops over, give it a pull, and then sew through the next four group of four 11 O's. Right there. I want you to come out of that group of four. All right, I'm just going to let you get to that point and then we'll continue. Okay, so we're exiting this group of four 11 O's. Pick up a two millimeter fire polish, exiting this. 11 -0. just go through the next group of four 11 -0s. Not that one in between the pearls, but this next group of four that you put on. So we're placing this fire polish bead right there. I'm gonna do that again. Pick up a fire polish bead, exiting right here. I'm gonna sew through the next four. So the four that you put on, kind of straightening it out. It'll straighten out on its own, but I kind of like to do that. Again, exiting here, sewing through these four. Like that. One more time. Exiting here, sew through these four, just like that, and the fire polish bead. You can straighten these out if you like. This is what I have so far. 
So I'll just get to that point, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, we're back. So grab some 15 O's. Let me put my 11 O's back over here. Some 15 O's and your bugle beads. Pick up a 15 O, a bugle bead, and a 15 O. We're exiting this fire polish bead. Just sew through the next one. This makes it really easy. 15 O, bugle bead, 15 O. Sew through the next one. Next fire polish. Fifteen O, bugle bead. Fifteen O. Sew through the next. Fire polish bead. Fifteen O, bugle bead. Fifteen O. Through the next fire polish bead. So now you've got it all, all your bugle beads on, and then I want you to advance through the next fifteen O bugle bead. Fifteen O. Okay, so this is what we have, just like that. All right, so get that done, come on back, and we'll continue. Okay, we're getting there. So we are exiting this 15-0. Pick up a 15-0, and I just want you to skip the fire polish bead and sew through the next 15-0 bugle bead 15-0. See how I'm kind of pulling it up a little bit? I want this 15-0 to sit in front. See how, I, see how I make that? Sit in front by using my thumb. So it's sitting in front. These three beads are sitting in front of the fire polish. I'm just going to do that all the way around. 15 0, skipping the fire polish sewing through the next 15 0, bugle bead. 15 0, pulling it. My thumb is in there and I'm pulling it so that they kind of pull together those three beads in the corner. Again, 15 0, through the 15 0, fire polish. A 15 0, bugle bead. 15 0, and if it doesn't go over, help it. Just like that. One more time. 15 0 through the 15 0 fire polish. 15 0 bugle bead. 15 0. Skipping that fire polish. And see how I'm pushing it over and pulling it in a little bit. All right? So then you can actually just sew through the next 15 0. Right there, that's that center one. The next 15 0. Bugle bead and 15 -0. So I've just gone through that whole corner right there. Okay, so just get that done and then come back and we'll put the stone in. Okay, so let's put the stone in. So before you put it in, what you can do to give it more space if you need it is you can just take a little like flat nose or chain nose and just push that little two millimeter down a little bit. It just gives a little more space in there. If, it, if need be. Then I'm just going to pop it in. I'm just going to hold it. It's not going to stay at the moment. I'm just going to sort of place it and hold it with my thumb. And then I'm going to go through all the beads again. So I'm going to go through all the 15 O's, all the bugle beads, because you have to get some thread in there to um, capture the stone. So I'm just sewing around again through all the beads. And this is going to connect all the beads as well. So see what happens when I pull? going around. You might have to go around two times, you might have to go around three times. You just want, and you can even just give it a little like push over like that. It's working. Keep going. This is where if you need your size 12 beading needle you can switch to that. I'm doing fine with my 11. And I'm going through, so I've done all all the rounds and then you just want to feel it at this point. You want to see gee, does it look even? Does it feel straight? It's looking very nice but you know what? I think I could go around again just to tighten it up and you can also give it a little push down like that and then you know like I said go around as many times like I see a little space right there I'm gonna go around again and I'm gonna make sure that I pull it so it see so that so when you see the corners, do you see how the center bead is sticking out a little bit more than the two 15 O's on either side of it? That's how you want it to look. So this is nice and sturdy now. It's not going to come out. I'm going to you know, just mess it around a little bit. Um, I can press on it. I'm going to pull. You know, so you just want to make sure you pull it. And so just play with it until it looks, you know, until you're happy with it. I think that came out pretty good. I'm exiting this. 15-0 after the bugle bead. 
I'm just going to sew through this fire polish bead. I'm going to go through, you know, I'm going to reverse direction and I'm going to go through this 11 0 and pearl, this 11 0, this 11 0. I kind of like reversing direction on this a little bit, and here I'm done. So this is the, we've got the ring part done. Okay, so that's how that's going to look. Pretty, like this actually. That's how we're going to do it. Alright, so get to that point, and then come on back, I'm going to put the band on. So the band is obviously putting on separately, and the reason that I do that, uh, especially for a ring, is because if you want this ring to last, um, you, eventually you're going to have to change the band. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. Your, th your band is made of thread, and if it's made of thread, you get it wet, it's going to stretch, it just happens. So what's great about this is you sew in your threads, you put on the band separately. So let's say after, you know, you've worn your, your ring for a while and, you know, you washed your hands and it's stretched out and you're not liking the way it looks anymore, you can just take that band right off and you can put another band on and then your ring is good because you will always have this piece nice and sturdy and you have not, the band is, is not part of the ring so nothing happens to this guy. So sew your threads in and come on back and we'll put on the band. Okay, let's start the band. So thread your needle with about 30 inches of thread and put a stop bead on right in the middle. So you're going to hold your piece like this, and your band is going to be coming out here and here, like that. So I'm just going to turn my piece over, and if you notice, so my band's coming out here and here, this fire polish bead is the opening, you know, the, um, it, the hole is vertical here. It just makes it easier. So I'm just going to, I'm going to hold it like this, I'm going to work from the back. I'm just going to sew through this 11 0 and let my stop bead end it right there. I just want to sew around to this one. So remember it's coming out here and here we're going to meet in the middle. So I'm going to sew through this 11, this uh, pearl and 11 0 this pearl and this 11 0 like that. So when I turn it this way, this is where my band is going to come out. So it's going to go in my hand like, whoops, like this. Okay. So make sure before we continue, I'm just going to let you get to this point, but just make sure that when you have, when you, after you put your thread on, that you actually have half on one side and half on the other, because I did it once and I pulled it and didn't realize it and I had six inches on one side and I had to redo it. <laughs> so just check your measurement on either side. Okay. Going to, so here I am. I'm coming in, I'm exiting this 11 0. I'm going to pick up two 11 0s, a three millimeter fire, uh, bicone, <laughs> two 11 0s. A three millimeter bicone, two 11 O's. That's what I have on my needle. Exiting here, I'm just going to sew through this guy. Now I just want to work my way around to get back to these beads. So to do that, I'm going to sew through this pearl. Down this bicone. The two millimeter. That's why I wanted your two your two millimeter facing vertically. So it just gives you an easy easy thread path. And then so this bicone. You might have to maneuver around a little bit. There we go. You know, it's it's not that it's full of thread, it's just that the beads are very close together. And then you're gonna make a turn, go up this pearl. Like that. And then through these three 11 O's, the bicone, and this one of the two 11 O's that's in the center, so that first one. So just get to that point and then come on back and we'll continue. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and I'm going to start my herringbone. So I'm just going to pop them right in between 
these two 11 so here I'm exiting this 11 so I want them to sit right here and they will we'll get them in there so just go through a few beads Let's see if I can pull in a teeny bit more like that see how that kind of they kind of sit in there don't worry about the thread pulling a little we'll get it all together so now I'm going to do the same thing go around again so through the pearl back through these guys if you need your size 12 beading needle here, grab it. I'm still working on my my 11. Like that. Through this guy. Back through the pearl. And up through these three 11 O's. And through the bicone and these two 11 O's right there. Okay, so get that done and come on back and we'll continue. Okay, we're going to start herringbone now. So I'll, I just turned it over to the front, but you can do it from the back too. Just pick one or the other. So picking up two 11 O's, exiting here, just going to sew through this one. Like that. Make sure it sits down. And then I'm just going to go directly across. So sewing down that one, I'm going to go up these two. Let me just get my needle in there. One, two. So, you know, down one, up two. Like that. Pick up two 11 O's. Going down this one. And then up. Just The thread will just tell you where to put your needle. See, just if you pull it across. So down one, up two. Two 11 O's down here. So down one, up these two. Two 11 O's, you got it. Down one, and I just pulled my needle off my thread, so let me get that back on there. One, up, two. I'll do it one more time because I lost my thread. Two 11 O's. Exiting here, down this one. Up, these two. Like so. Pulls into place. And then you have the start of your band. So this is going to go like like so. All right, so you're just going to continue that until you get about, you know, half your finger width. And then you're going to do the same exact thing on this side. Just take off your stop bead and do the same exact thing on this side until your band meets in the middle. And, you know, you'll play with that. Um, I have big knuckles, so my ring size is much bigger than my finger size. So my finger here is probably like a seven and my knuckle makes it like an eight and a half. <laughs> so, you know, you have to adjust it. So play with it. So get both sides done and then come on back and we'll sew them together. All right. See you in a few. Okay. We're back. So I have both my sides on and I was just thinking if you like a very delicate little bracelet, why couldn't you do that? Uh, maybe maybe you can even use Eidos here. I don't know. I think it would make a really pretty little um, a little delicate bracelet if you're into super delicate or a choker, if, you know, right around the neck. Or what if you just did this and made a bail and you could make a pretty pendant. So lots of options here. All right, so we're going to make a ring, though. So here I have both sides done. So all I'm going to do... So I'm going to take my needle, I'm exiting the end bead here. I'm just going to sew it right, like directly across to the other side. So I have a thread coming out of there. Not a big deal. I'm just going to forget it's there. I'm just going to connect the two ends like this. You see how that connects? And now you want to keep sewing all the way down until you get to... 
part of the ring here, we want to come up, make sure I'm in frame, we want to come up through this bead right here, so that very tippy top bead. Pick up an 11-0, go, go down the other side, so I'm just picking up, I'm placing an 11-0 right there. I'm just going to go down. So it kind of pops out in the in that little spot there. And then I'm just going to continue, let me hold it this way, down on this side. So what's going to make this band rigid enough is that you're going to keep going through these beads. So we're going to do this a few times. I'll just get it done with you to this point. So here, I'm just going down through the other side. So now I want to put that little 11 -0 on this side too. So let me just come through. So here. Picking up an 11 -0, Going back down. This side. Make sure you're going through all the beads. So that puts that 11 -0 on. And then you're going to continue down until you, I don't know, you're going to get maybe this thread I'm just going to hold aside. I'm going to pass that where that other thread is coming out. Like this. I'm going to give that a nice pull. And then I'm going to, I'm going to actually leave that thread at the moment. Then I'm going to take this thread. I'm going to do the exact same thing, although I'm not going to add that 11 -0. I'm just going to go through all the beads. So this one, the thread is exiting here. I'm just going to go this way. And you really want to fill up those beads because you want to make sure that the band is going to be rigid enough and it's not going to stretch out too quickly. So here I'm just going through all these 11 -0. So just taking that other thread and just going through here. I'm sorry I haven't addressed my, my right hand yet. I, I had a sprain on that finger, this finger, for a long time and so I just made my turn and I'm coming down. And sometimes it gets aggravated, so I'm a little clumsy today, so I do apologize for any clumsiness I've had during the video. I'm just going to keep going down. It's not really um, that painful. Just every once in a while, like it has like feels like electric shocks. Ah. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep going down this one. Go across here, back down, and then the way you're going to sew your threads in is that, let's say, so you're exiting... So I'm exiting this, one of these 11 O's here. I'm just going to reverse direction a couple of times. So exiting here, I'm just going to go reverse direction and go through a couple beads. And then I'm going to reverse direction, go through a couple beads, and do that maybe two or three times. Um, and that's how I'm going to, because uh, you really can't tie a knot there. Just keep reversing direction. So here's what it looks like. So I'm just going to finish this up, and then come on back, and we'll... Uh, look at our rings. Okay, here's our ring. So really pretty. Just looks almost, you know, looks very vintage, like you might have gotten it in some, you know, vintage jewelry store. Uh, very um, comfortable because of that narrow band. Like I said, you know, if something happens to a band on any one of your rings where you connect the band on separately, so easy. You have your, the top of your ring, you can just make another band. You can even change the band if you like. You can make a pendant out of it, so you'll always have that piece. So I always recommend you putting on your band separately. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.